Hey everyone, welcome back to Sax Tuition on YouTube. My name is Jeremy. In this video, I'm going to show you my system for managing my reads, how I always keep a great, reliable backup read ready to go, and how I know when it's time to just give up and throw them out. But before we get into it, if you're just starting out on the saxophone, you're not sure where to start, check out lesson one of the Sax Tuition Beginner Series. You can watch it for free right here on YouTube and you can head to saxtuition.com afterwards and download a free sample of the ebook and the play along tracks. And I've left links for both of those things in the description below. So let's get into it. Now let's start with a simple fact, reeds are expensive, which makes the act of throwing them out so difficult and so painful. So unless you're made of money, you're gonna wanna have a system in place to keep your reeds lasting longer and also just to keep track of your current number one read. So what I personally use is a fairly simple little reed holder. It's a Rico Reed Garden. For those interested, it sells for about $10 and you can pick it up on Amazon. I've left a link for it in the description below. Now, as you can see here, what I've done is I've marked on a bit of tape number one and number two for my number one and my number two read. Now, each read has its own life cycle, as you can see from this highly scientific graph I made. When you pull out a fresh read from the box, it's gonna play pretty close to its best, but it will need anywhere between about one to five hours of playtime for it to really peak in terms of tone and projection. So if you've got an important performance coming up, it's useful to keep this in mind when deciding when to start on a new read. Now what's happening in that ramp up period is the fibers in the reed are starting to loosen up a little bit and the reed is starting to vibrate more freely, really starting to show off its maximum tone potential. Unfortunately, after you've reached the peak, it's all downhill from there. The good news is though, it's usually a pretty steady decline and it won't be immediately obvious that the reed is starting to tank. In fact, it's unlikely that a general listener will be able to tell much difference at all between a read at its peak and a read in decline. You'll be able to tell as a player when you notice that the tone has started to thin out and you lose some of that warmth and body in your sound. You'll also be able to feel the difference when you play. You'll find that the reed offers less resistance as you blow into the mouthpiece as the fibers in the reed start to break down. Now on paper, playing with less resistance might sound like a really positive thing. However, what you'll find is you actually need a little bit of resistance when you play to give you the maximum control over your sound, particularly in the higher register. Plus, a bit of resistance also means that the reed is less sensitive to small changes in your embouchure, which can also help you out with tuning. So now it's back to my numbering method. How do I choose between my number one and my number two reads? Well, first comes the pre-screening. I'll take a read out of the box and see what it plays like. If I like it right away, Fantastic, I've found my new number one read. And after my playing session, it goes straight into the number one spot. If I don't like it, perhaps it sounds stuffy or it doesn't have the projection that I'm after, it goes back in the box and I just flip it around the other way so that I know it's been played already. As a side note, it's really easy to tell if I've played a Van Doren read before because each read comes individually wrapped in its own sealed plastic. Now those reads that I've put back in the box, they're in read purgatory. Perhaps they need to be played a little more to really open up, but most likely they need to be lightly worked on with a reed tool or sandpaper to get the most out of them. But that's really a topic for another video. Now, as I'm playing my number one read, I'll be monitoring its progress. And if I start to notice that it's in decline, I'll start thinking about switching to another read. The key thing here is to switch to the new read before your old read becomes completely blown out. How will you know if your reed's blown out? Well, you'll know when you can't play your saxophone in tune, assuming that you normally can. You've got a chip or a split in the reed. The reed becomes dark or discolored. You've got more squeaks than usual, or the tone has thinned out too much. And that's something that's really in your judgment as a player. Now, when I switch to my new reed, 
assuming that I managed to switch before my old read became blown out, then that old number one read becomes my number two read. Now it doesn't sound like much, but that number two read can be a real lifesaver. I've played some pretty big gigs in my time and there's nothing worse than having a read split right before you're about to hit the stage or even right in the middle of a performance. Knowing that you've got a good read in your pocket that you can swap to can be an absolute godsend, especially since it only needs to get you through the rest of the gig. Now, there are some really fancy read cases out there with humidity control and UV lights for disinfecting your reads. I'm sure these read cases are fantastic, but personally, I've always gone with these simple read holders because they fit easily in my pocket. And I find if you're careful with your reads and you dry them before you put them back in your case, they won't get all gross the next time you play them. Well guys, I hope that's been valuable to you. If you've got any questions or read tips that you'd like to share, do leave them in the comment section down below. And remember, if you're looking for a bit of direction in your playing and you're just starting out, check out the Sax Tuition Beginner Series. It's a complete package for learning the saxophone from scratch. There's 12 lesson videos, a PDF ebook, and over 200 demo tracks to play along with. Check out Lesson 1 on YouTube or head straight over to saxtuition.com to learn more. Guys, thank you for all your support on the channel. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the Sax Tuition YouTube channel for more great saxophone content. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye.